Well, we're back down on the marsh again, and we're going to, well, we're in the woods at the moment. We pass through these woods and out the other side onto the marsh, where I hope to uh, see a little bit of wildlife of one sort or another. You never know exactly what you're going to see, but uh, all's being well. Now a few of you have been watching my channel will know that I'm now using the Olympus OM-1, which I think is a brilliant camera. Uh, the main thing with it for me is the focusing. For other people it's got lots of other th things as well which make it makes it a very good uh, general camera but uh, for me wildlife it's down to the focusing which to be quite honest is brilliant. Now I've paired it up with my 100-400 Panasonic Leica lens which is a very good lens but at the 100 um, scale it's on f4 and at 400 millimeters it's 6.3 of course full frame terms that's 800 millimeters at 6.3 which is not too bad but could be a lot better. I could get a an F4 prime, which would be a lot better. But it's the expense. Now, what I was trying to point out was it's a very capable medium the road sort of uh, lens. The Olympus 150 to 400 lens is very good. It's f4 right the way through the range. So a lot more light gathering capability and a lot more, you have a lot more uh, opportunities shall we say. But for me, for wildlife, the aperture's wide open. No matter what, whether I'm at 100 millimeters or 400 millimeters, the lens is wide open. So I'm either at f4 or I'm at 6.3 at the very top end, which means the only other adjustments that I have is the ISO and shutter speed and of course I use shutter speed a lot um, so I don't have that great opportunity to do much else really but it works and I get some pretty good results as I think uh, you will note when you look through my channel so I shoot from anywhere between 3,200 of a second to about 150 of a second, depending whether the subject happens to be fairly static or the size of the subject or uh, the speed that it's moving at. So let's whoop, model it out. That's basically how I shoot, so it's cameras on my hip, it's just a case of raising the camera, uh, aiming, trying to get a decent frame, but you can't always do that because like we're walking through the woods now, I could have something pop up on the right hand side of me, which would mean I'd be facing into the sun or it could pop up on the left hand side 
and I'll be have the sun to my back which of course makes a big difference to the exposure usually get some butterflies, dragonflies and moths along this uh, little bit of path in the reeds here as you can see not much going on today but will there be anything going on across the marsh Right, I'm going to spin around and you'll be able to see where we are. The marsh opens up behind me and then where I was facing and then over to the other side which is where the main part of the marsh is over that way. of the gate here and we have two, two options we can go through that gate there or we can go through this gate here and when the weather's not so good as you can see that's rather low lying that would generally be full of water so we wouldn't go that way we would go through the gate there and it takes us up and around but as it's not too bad We'll go through here. singing now very difficult to see in the reeds right we got the embankment have a look across the marsh nice shots of heron and uh, some egrets as well here you can probably see I'll see if I can zoom in I don't know if you'll see that or not but you can just see Stubbs Mill in the distance just caught this heron taking off from the marsh and as you will see later on there's quite a few of them and the uh, great white egrets as well well it's a beautiful evening lots of black-headed gulls across the marsh I 
it together and eager it as it uh, took over, took, sorry, took off this side and then flew right the way round and across behind me into the trees so it covered quite a bit of ground this is the great egret otherwise known as the great white egret which is all part of the heron family of course we have lots of herons in this part of the world um, the grey blue heron uh, very very common but we also as i say we have these egrets now which are becoming more and more more and more uh, common now as well We've had a heron, egret, I think that was a great egret and, a, and a, I can see a coot now. But generally it's very quiet, very quiet. You usually see more birds feeding on the marsh. But uh, there's a distinct lack of them at the moment. I'm hoping I've got one or two shots of the egret flying past the Stubbs Mill. Although Stubbs Mill is in the background, it should make quite a nice shot. Depends how I get on post-production with it. I've got my fingers crossed for that. Might make a nice, nice image. A bit of activity going on now, I don't know. Something bringing the other birds up. Oh. It's just the Chinese water deer. So uh, catch a glimpse in between the reeds if you're lucky. As I say, a lot of the activity is uh, black headed gulls, which is no interest to me. And so to end the day. You see this marsh harrier flying across the other side of the marsh. Nice to see, but too far away to get a decent shot. So bye for now. Thanks for watching. And could you please give us a thumbs up? That would be good. And maybe subscribe as well. Most Much appreciated. And hopefully we will see you next time. If you subscribe, you will get notification of when the next video comes out. So many thanks for that and bye for now.